up to the kind of liberal democracy and technologically driven capitalism that we have today. And the end of history refers to the what I think still remains a question of whether that process uh, is one that can terminate, uh, whether that evolution you know, finally culminates in a certain kind of civilization uh, that in a certain sense will be the, you know, the last civilization that mankind will achieve because in a certain sense it's the, you know, it's the right one, it's the one that fits human nature. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil despicable acts of terror. Horror. Horror. To protect our citizens at home and around the world from further attacks. And the president said we have the support of 40 intelligence agencies around the world from various countries. That's the kind of support that is so vital, so necessary. I take the fact that he develops weapons of mass destruction. He shot smart rockets. Board, main tank ground, tow missiles, anything. We knew there was somebody in the building, we used our snipers. The question is whether he represents an imminent threat to the American people and whether a unilateral American invasion of Iraq will do more harm than good. I find it deeply distasteful that the British Prime Minister can use the medieval powers of the royal prerogative to send young men and women to die, to kill civilians, and for Iraqis to die. And then we join the military, and they tell us that our enemies are poor people in caves in Afghanistan, or poor people in the deserts of Iraq, but we've been to those countries, and we know that our enemies are not other poor people abroad, our enemies are the people that laid us off from our jobs, that denied us health care, that make it impossible to get an education. Our enemies are not in the poorest countries on the planet, but right here in the richest one. here, a loss of 37 points or so. Apple shares are just getting hammered this morning. We're down by between 3 and 4.5% four and generally across these markets. Let's talk about the speed with which we are watching this market. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Over the past few weeks, many Americans have felt anxiety about their finances and their future. I understand their worry and their frustration. We've seen triple-digit swings in the stock market. Major financial institutions have teetered on the edge of collapse, and some have failed. October's decline marked the 10th straight month of job cuts, and government revisions showed that losses in August and September turned out to be much deeper than previously reported. In applications, and I don't get anything back. He's making ends meet by working in a wine shop, while laid-off Missouri workers like Elizabeth Williams are waiting longer for their unemployment checks. Three weeks went by. Four weeks went by, still nothing. The four-week wait has jumped to six weeks, says Missouri's Department of Labor, because calls for help have doubled from 6,000 to 12,000 a week. If there is anyone out there 
who still doubts that America is a place where all things are possible, who still wonders if the dream of our founders is alive in our time, who still questions the power of our democracy. Tonight is your answer. It is called the coming insurrection. The heightened financial turmoil that we have experienced of late may well lengthen the period of weak economic performance and further increase the risk to growth. The insurrection. Uh, the financial reforms that are designed to prevent the abuses that got us into this mess in the first place. That does not make sense to the American people. They are frustrated. Violence. Violence. Pick up a gun. Pick up a gun. Violence. Violence. There's no such thing as a peaceful insurrection. Violence. Violence. Pick up a gun. Pick up a gun. Violence. Violence. What, what, what weapons are necessary? We only see the violence of change. But my first reply to you would be, are we aware how much violence goes on just to keep things going on the way they are? Thank you. Thank you very much. There are many sources of American power, diplomatic, economic, and the power of our ideals. And we've got to use them all. We are leading economically, forging trade packs to create new markets for our goods. Our alliances are the foundation of global security. In Libya, all 28 NATO allies played a role, and we were joined by partners in the air from Sweden to the Gulf states. In Afghanistan, we're in a coalition of 50 allies and partners. Today, Air Force personnel are serving in 135 nations, partnering, training, building their capacity. This is how peace and security will be upheld in the 21st century. More nations bearing the costs and responsibilities of leadership, and that's good for America. It's good for the world. Marcus Carlson, uh, can you just run us through what's happened in the last 35 minutes or so from where you're standing just several hundred metres away? More on that horrifying night in Paris. Police have now confirmed at least four attacks in the city of Paris. ISIS. Between ISIS, leader of ISIS. ISIS. ISIS is paying. Here is it to defeat ISIS, uh, to stop its momentum, to damage ISIS. What is the goal here? Today, we're taking a look at how the ongoing conflict has shaped what some call one of the world's worst refugee crises. Triggered an epic humanitarian crisis, the biggest wave of refugees in modern history. World, especially ISIS, are trying to take advantage of the refugee influx all over the world to sneak in fighters. Among. I think that uncontrolled migration is not in the interests of the migrants themselves. It's not in the interests of refugees who may find that they see less support as a result. It's not in the interests of uh, the countries that people are coming from, traveling through or trying to get to. Since the early days of the internet, far-right extremists have been responsible for around 700 terrorist attacks worldwide. To be white is to be a striver, a crusader, an explorer and a conqueror. It's not just that many are genuinely stupid. Indeed, one wonders if these people are people at all virtually irremediable differences in people's cognitive performance and that those differences have a very uh, a very solid biological and heritable basis no one wants to hear that and and but, even worse they don't want to hear that it differs between genders and ethnicities that is to me one of the most painful things that i've ever learned in my life the ashkenazi jews for example have on average a 15 point advantage over the rest of the caucasian population which is sufficient to account for their radical overrepresentation in positions of authority and influence and and productivity it's like a magnet just like 
I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. <laughs> I can do anything. Ladies and gentlemen, the president-elect of the United States, Donald John Trump. CNN projects Donald Trump wins the presidency. We'll see is instead of this being Donald Trump being the true death knell from the Republican Party, what he's actually led tonight is a revival. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! It is time to drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. This is why I'm proposing a package of ethics reforms to make our government honest once again. Breaking news from the Trump transition, President-elect expected to choose Rick Perry for energy secretary. He met with the former Texas governor Monday at Trump Tower. You see him right there. And also Trump nominating ExxonMobil CEO Rex Tillerson for secretary of state. His close ties to Vladimir Putin raising questions. Hundreds of white nationalists storming the University of Virginia, protesting plans to remove a statue. There was a group on this side, you can call them the left, you've just called them the left, that came violently attacking the other group. So you can say what you want, but that's the way it is. I'm here today to announce that the program known as DACA that was effectuated under the Obama administration is being rescinded. This unilateral executive amnesty, among other things, contributed to a surge of minors at the southern border that yielded terrible humanitarian consequences. with the stark findings of an international team of scientists led by the UK Met Office, which raised profound questions about the future of the Earth's climate. Climate change report the UN released today. As William Brangham tells us, it provided the starkest warnings yet, not only about what could happen, but what's already been set into motion. Millions of Americans, through no fault of their own, are paying the price this Labor Day holiday for America's worsening economic inequality. Donald Trump has become only the third U.S. president to be impeached. Uh, the Democrat-controlled House of Representatives last night approved two charges, uh, setting up a trial next month in the Senate. Now to growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. Here's what we know. A Washington state resident fell ill after returning from Wuhan, China. Breaking news, Mayor de Blasio announces he is shutting down New York City's school system. There is no school tomorrow, and we will be suspending our public schools until after the spring vacation. Because of all we've done, the risk to the American people remains very low. People die from the flu. I can breathe. Please, the name of it. Mama, mama, I can't. Cities across the United States remain in a state of high tension tonight as the country braces itself for another wave of protests over the death of George Floyd. And there are flames coming out of it. The 3rd Precinct Minneapolis Police Station is now on fire, Brian. Get inside! Get your house now! Let's go! Go inside now! Get in the house! 
State charging documents allege that Chauvin had his knee on Floyd's neck for more than eight minutes, even after Floyd became non-responsive. His attorney has declined to comment. To be drowned out by an angry mob, I will fight to keep them safe. I will fight to protect you. I am your president of law and order. Tonight, we're learning disturbing new details from the night Louisville police shot and killed Breonna Taylor in her apartment. Death and video of Chauvin kneeling on his neck led to what may go down as the largest wave of protests in American history, ongoing in many cases. The protesters have demanded greater police accountability and an end to systemic racism. We've reached a historic moment in this election. We can now project the winner of the presidential race. It means we can now project that former Vice President Joe Biden has been elected president. CNN projects Joseph R. Biden Jr. is elected the 46th president of the United States. We've won with the most votes ever cast on presidential ticket in the history of the nation. 74 million. You count the legal votes, I easily win. If you count the illegal votes, they can try to steal the election from us. And this is just showing the world that, you know, we, President Trump has so much support. We see the fraud that's going on in front of our eyes, and we're just not going to let it happen. We want Trump! We want Trump! This was not the million-person march that it was built to be, but it was a big turnout. Trump's base is loud, and they're refusing to lose quietly. Events in Washington have taken a violent and tumultuous turn in the past few hours, as thousands of supporters of President Trump stormed the US Capitol building. first Capitol Police officer charged with obstruction of justice in the January 6th riot, the officer accused of telling a rioter, I agree with your political stance. I was electrocuted again and again and again. I heard chanting from some in the crowd, get his gun and kill him with his own gun. I was aware enough to recognize I was at risk of being stripped of and killed with my own firearm. One woman in a pink MAGA shirt yelled, you hear that guys? This voted for Joe Biden. Then the crowd, perhaps around 20 people, joined in screaming, boo, fucking No one had ever, ever called me a while wearing the uniform of a Capitol Police officer. 2020 has been a challenging time for our people. A menacing pandemic has upended the lives of our citizens, isolated millions in their homes, damaged our economy, and claimed countless lives. Defeating this pandemic and rebuilding the greatest economy on Earth will require all of us working together To answer your question, frankly, I guess it is America. It shouldn't be, but I guess that's the way that things are. The collective action from workers comes in the middle of a tight labor market and in a year when many companies have posted 
record profits. Uh, many of them saw their employers bring in record record profits while they were putting their health, their lives on the line, often risking the health, health and lives of their families. Um, and they're really seeing uh, this stark uh, demonstration that their employers don't care that much about them. They don't care about their well-being. They don't care about sharing profits with employees. And they're really reaching their limit. They're absolutely maxed out. Broke through and all of a sudden the blue is down below and the blackness of space. Now space is interesting, uh, the universe lies there, but at that moment, in that big window, it was only black and ominous, and that was death, and this was life, and everything else just stood still for a moment. I was overwhelmed with the experience, with the, with the sensation of looking at death and looking at life, and, and this, you know, what's become uh, a, a cliche, uh, of how we need to take care of the planet, but it's so fragile. We must also realize that the problems of racial injustice and economic injustice cannot be solved without a radical redistribution of political and economic power. You are demanding that this city will respect the dignity of labor. So often we overlook the work and the significance of those who are not in professional jobs, of those who are not in the so-called big jobs. But let me say to you tonight that whenever you are engaged in work that serves humanity and is for the building of humanity, it has dignity and it has worth. You are reminding not only Memphis but you are reminding the nation that it is a crime for people to live in this rich nation and receive starvation wages.